Hi, my name is Jerry Jen, and what I'd like to do today is to explain to you uh, what is the terminology with regard to GANS nanoplasma. And this work is really from Maran uh, Keshe uh, of the Keshe Foundation. Uh, but I've made some discoveries with regard to uh, how to detect these energies. So this discussion here is just to explain uh, what these terms are. Many of you may have heard of the term ormus or monatomic, and some of you may have heard the word GANs and uh, plasma. Uh, ormus has been known and it was discovered in 1975 by David Hudson, a cotton farmer in Arizona. And he came across materials that behaved very, very strangely and defied uh, ways to measure it uh, by normal uh, conventional chemistry and physics uh, techniques. And uh, the term Ormus was coined, uh, also sometimes called, called Ormus, Ormi orbitally rearranged monatomic elements or the M state of, of matter. Keshe coined the term GANS, uh, G-A-N-S, and that's it for gas in the nanosolid state. Uh, and Ormus is uh, nothing more than a form of GANS. So GANS, as said, is gas in the nanosolid state. In the next slide after this, I'll describe that in uh, greater detail, so you have a better understanding of that. But it is another state of matter, still matter. Uh, you know, normally know about solids, liquids, and gases. And at the higher energy level are nano, GANs, and plasma. And I'll talk about that in another slide. And this, so let me go to that next slide. Uh, this slide is a good one to explain matter, nano, and gas. Let's pretend that the blue solid balls at the bottom of the slide, uh, the ones that are all compacted together, uh, which we call solid matter, let's call it copper. Let's call it a copper tube. Uh, if you heat up the copper tube um, with a flame, put a pro propane tor torch on it, the surface will become black. Well, did copper burn? No, copper doesn't burn. Uh, are there chemical reactions? Yeah. Uh, no, what really happens is that uh, you've loosened the surface uh, atoms of um, the copper and that now uh, coats the surface of the copper um, and they're still held together, but the uh, individual atoms are loosely spaced. And this has a characteristic of being a superconductor uh, because they are spaced and things can flow through it much more easily than through a packed copper wire. And that uh, black coating is called nano. Um, so it's, it's basically a coating. Uh, using various techniques, uh, acid, alkali, things of that nature, uh, and water, uh, you can free the material and form uh the the nano coating now gets free instead of being associated with the uh, copper wire it's now in this in the water uh and that is what's called gas in the nano state so there's basically loosely associated uh atoms uh in in the liquids and if you look at uh you have, you're not, may not be aware of the term BG3 or 369 yet. Uh, I gave uh, in one of the series of my talks, a uh, definition of 369 is a subtle energy. BG3 is another subtle energy. And the solid matter does not have that energy. The nano coating matter does have the 369 energy. And the GANs or gas in the nano state has no BG3 but it does have the uh, 369 uh, energy. And the picture's sort of obscuring that. So let me see if I can move that picture up higher. And uh, so 
GANS has 369. This is another slide from the Keshe Foundation in which he talks about uh, the various forms of matter. Uh, they're not aware of the 369 energies uh, or BG3, uh, so they don't talk about that, but I introduce that into this slide. So you have copper, which is normal solid matter. Uh, you've created a blackened copper with a flame or from other techniques uh, that uh, Keshe talks about. There's a variety of ways to make uh, the nano and make GANs. And that material does have the 369 energy and that can be detected uh, uh, by a, a special 369 pendulum. And you get that material into the water, uh, in, into the liquid, and that, now you have the GANs, and that has the 369 energy, but no BG3. And BG3 is a harmony energy uh, of, that uh, gets formed in the environment. But the GANs itself, by its structure, will form fields. And the fields that are formed will have both BG3 and 369. The GANs structures what's in the environment so that it does have that energy. And Keshe's statement on this is that this, this new understanding of nanomaterials, GANs, and fields is what plasma science is all about. These fields are magnetic fields Everything in the universe is made from magnetic fields and their interactions. From the atom to the body to the universe, all are made from these fields, from the ones we can't see to the ones we don't see. Uh, a little further understanding of uh, what all of this is. GANS basically is, uh, has a magnetic and a gravitational aspect to it. Magnets, you think of them as north-south, but north and south are nothing more than magnetic and uh, gravitational. Um, and that's another way to think about what a magnet is. It has attraction, gravitational, magnetic, repulsion. So if you have some disk magnets and put them on a surface, they will position themselves according to uh, the repulsion and attraction. So magnets and GANs have a lot in common. And when I talk about fields, you'll see that the fields they form are virtually identical. So here we have two, uh, you'd say they're magnets, but they're, they're GANs materials, and there's flowing energy flowing out and energy flowing in. Uh, and that is what uh, this happens with, with magnets, and that is what happens with uh, GANs or ORMUS. And that's a way to understand GANs and ORMUS and plasma. So this structure, this uh, slide says the same thing. Uh, there's flows in and flows out, uh, which are gravitational and magnetic. And uh, so Keshe Tump sometimes calls this maggrav. These units are maggrav units. And you see the basic structure of the torus there. There's uh, the donut shape that is there and the flowing in and out of, of the energies that are magnetic and gravitational. And this brings you back to Walter Russell's uh, vortex in, vortex out for creation and decay. So summary per cache, plasma science is going beyond what we have known, what we have known as the matter state. It's not magic, it is what uh, we do not understand yet. We begin to understand that everything in this universe and beyond is made of fields, principled magnetic and gravitational fields or MAGRAF. Now, Ormus and Gans, uh, have the 369 energies, and I described this before. Um, and anytime you have a, a torus and a torus structure, and all the symbols associated with the torus structure, uh, you find the 369 energies. So GANs and ORMUS can be measured and can be detected with a special pendulum 
a 369 pendulum, which I described how to make uh, in another uh, YouTube. And the fields that Ormus and Gans produce has both BG3 and 369 subtle energies. Researchers have been working in this field a long time, but they have not had a way to detect Gans and Ormus uh, without a lot of hassle. Uh, but the fields and the Gans can be detected uh, now with both BG3 and 369 uh, pendulums. And this should help accelerate the growth of these, uh, this very important field. Uh, Ormus is really so, relatively simple uh, material to make. Uh, uh, Keshe describes more elaborate ways to make GANs, and uh, I suggest reading the Spaceship Institute lectures. Uh, there's 12 of them that gives a great description of what he does. But I'll just talk about a little bit about Ormus because that's an easy one to make. It's a simple form of GANs. It's a mixture of, of different types of, of metals. And all one does is take a solution of sea salt, bring it uh, to an alkaline pH of about 11, uh, and the fluffy Ormus forms. And researchers have found that uh, if a cat lost a tail, uh, the tail grows back when you uh, put uh, Ormus on, on the tail. Oranges can grow to the size of grapefruits. Uh, uh, mortality and infection rates of bro broiler chickens are reduced significantly when they're exposed to Ormus. So there's a lot of healing properties with regard to uh, these energies. Brown's gas is not known to be uh, a GANS uh, material. Uh, but uh, I bought one of George Wiseman's kits uh, from Eagle Research and created a uh, Brown's gas machine, which uh, is shown in the picture is something that I constructed based upon instructions from uh, George. It's a special form of electrolysis. There's, there are two electrodes at two ends, but many plates in between. It's when those plates uh, in between that another gas is formed. Uh, one can call it monatomic hydrogen. Uh, George Wiseman doesn't believe that's what it really is, but it is GANs. What comes out of uh, the material, the gas forms from uh, this hydro from this electrolysis, and is bubbled through water, and the gas comes out and has special properties. Uh, you can attach a torch to it and it'll burn. You can breathe it and it has a huge amount of BG3 and 369 energies associated with it. The energy coming out immediately does have some have a negative form of BG3 cause counterclockwise rotation so it's the negative half of the creation uh, decay cycle so you ground the system by mentally grounding it and then the material that comes out of the bubbler uh, for, that gets formed has positive BG3 energies. And if you breathe it, uh, your vibrational rate, uh, which I talked about in another uh, YouTube, goes up tremendously. Uh, so you can breathe it for half an hour or whatever, and your vibrational rate uh, goes up uh, significantly. So, uh, GANs may be a mon combination monatomic hydrogen and oxygen, or a combination um, of the two hydrogen and oxygen that forms a semblance of a water molecule, which is not really true water. Um, and that may be what uh, George is uh, measuring. But it's an interesting field at any rate. It, it is definitely GANs. Um, this slide just summarizes uh, some of the YouTubes that uh, in, the, in the series, uh, because you'll need to, to understand how to measure uh, 369 energies and BG3 energies and understand uh, a bit about dowsing and energy flows from the right brain to your fingers. Uh, and so this series of, of topics 
in which I have YouTubes on all on each of the topics, separate ones, all about 10 to 15 minutes in length. Gives you a fantastic background on uh, if you're into GANs and Ormus uh, measurements and knowing what it is, uh, you'll need to go through these this series of uh, YouTubes to understand uh, how to measure it, how to measure the fields. So thank you, and with that, I'll stop uh, this session.